Perfect. So, all right, I will do a little bit a different approach. I will not get you super fast to the command line. I will first get you a short introduction to, see, to ECC DNAs because I think most of you have maybe this or on, on two days ago have heard the first time about ECC DNAs at all. And so I want to give you a short overview on what this is and where they came from and why they might be interesting to you. Maybe you already know, but let's see if I can tell you a little bit more about this. So maybe a little bit more on me. I'm from Theo Dresden, and if you, oh, you can't see it. So if you want to reach me, the <laughs> it's down there. So maybe let's do it like this. So I'm, you can reach me via email or other, other social media platforms. If you have any questions you could not ask here, or can also use the Slack to ask anything. We always try to help if there's any problems with the pipeline. So as I said, um, first of all, I want to jump into why or where the ECC DNAs came from and when they were first, first detected. So um, the ECC DNAs has been, have been known for quite a while already. And they were discovered about 50 years ago by using electron microscopy. And you can see in the pictures that there are special or is that they are circular. So they are really there. They do exist. They are just not made up by some pipeline. So you can really see them. And as I said, the first ones were detected in PIC. It's a little bit hard to see. So I marked some of them here so you can see them better. I hope you will believe me that those are circular and that those are ECC DNAs. So from that point, we now know what it is. As you may also have read, uh, uh, read the uh, description above, so I will not go into detail here, but um, there are different kinds of uh, circular DNA. So one of them, probably most of you know, is a circular organelle DNA, so mitochondrial DNA and so on, and it has a mid-range size, I would say, and they contain the organelle genes. But there are also others, as we just saw in the picture before, in the middle one, in the karyotype, there are also larger ones, which are referred to as double minutes or nowadays also EC DNA. They are very specific to cancers. So they all might be also interesting to some of the people here. And they can reach up to several MB. What we are mostly interested in is the small polydispersed dispersed circular DNAs. They are quite small, can reach up to 20 KB, but this is just a rough estimation. And they also can be a little bit bigger. And we refer to them as just ECC DNAs as those are the ones who can contain repetitive elements such as satellites, RDNA, telomeric circles, or also active retrotransposons. So to summarize a little bit what they can do, what is known, there's not a lot known, I, I have to admit, but they, it has been shown that they are playing a role in aging, for example, in yeasts, that they can trigger immune responses, that uh, they are can be uh, donors of RNAi RNA regulations, so gene regulations. And as I just said before, they are big, uh, they play a big role in cancers. So there can also be onco oncogenes on them, or as it has been shown in plants that there is a amaranthus which has, which has a glyphosate resistance gene on an ECC DNA. So they, uh, there's a lot going on and it's pretty interesting. And as I showed already, yeah, as I said, this is the one we are interested in. So as I already said on two days ago, we are interested to, in, to, in them because they circular transposable elements in them. So if they are active, if they are jumping around, they can be detected as circular intermediates. And that's what happened, or that's what was shown, and that's why we were interested, especially in those elements. And at this time point, this was the study we we got or so which was published and where you can really nicely see a, an Arabidopsis where a LTR retrotransposon is activated and they could show that this is indeed in the ECC DNAs. So they also showed it experimentally but also with the ECC DNAs sequencing. That's where the term mobilome sec sequencing or mobilome sec is coming from if you wonder. And I will come back to this term later on. So since this, since 2017, when they are kind of re, were re-approached, um, the ECC DNAs, 
It has been shown in several plants, sorry for the plant bias here, but it has been shown in different plants that there are indeed active retrotransposons which can be detected as ECC DNA intermediates. All right, so what we have now is a pretty, a pretty established method to do the sequencing on ECC DNAs. So they are sometimes called a little bit different, like mobilomsec or circle sec DNA, uh, circle sec, but they, in principle, they all work the same. So first of all, you do a, just a DNA isolation with a kit or something else. Doesn't really matter as long as you have your whole DNA. Then there is an extra nuclease step where you remove all the linear DNA and hopefully end up with only the circles left. So this step is known that is not complete, but you have a lot less linear DNA left. Then you're doing a rolling circle amplification with a 529 polymerase, and you will hopefully end up with a lot of your ECC DNA copies. What you can do next is either you go back in the lab and do some diagnostic PCRs, or you can send this to sequencing and we usually use a Nextera library preparation because it works quite well and you don't need much DNA uh, to do this preparation and you also don't need a lot of coverage. So we usually use uh, less than one X coverage for our analysis. So this is probably also an advantage of using this technique to detect active transposons because you don't need a lot of data. So, but as we all know, it's sometimes quite difficult to reproduce even our own stuff and not to say stuff that other people did. So that's when we thought about how could we make this maybe more standardized and how can we get to a point where if, we, if any lab, lab runs this, uh, this analysis, they will come to the same result. So we tried to put together the ECC Explorer pipeline, which basically is just a bunch of other things used, like maybe a bit like we heard before, we hijack other pipelines that already exist and are not meant for this, but they work pretty well. So with this, I think we can go into the tutorial for today. And if you want to uh, find the workshops um, tutorial and the steps to do, you can go to the GitHub page of the ECC Explorer it's pretty easy to find. You just have to type those ECC Explorer GitHub into your favorite search engine, and you will probably end up with it as a top result. So it's pretty easy to find. So if you want to follow along, I will just do this now and uh, show you where, it, where I end up with. So as I just said, you will get this hopefully as a top result. I tried to this without any bias. So <laughs> hopefully you will end up here. So if you go on there, you will come to the GitHub repository. And depending on how your GitHub is set up, it will be either this, like this, in a dark mode or in a white mode, depending on your setup. So we, here we have a brief description of the pipeline itself and also the citation. If you use it, it's down here. Or if you want to just want to read more on it, so there's also some explanation and nice examples on when we used it. Okay, but for today, we will stay up here. We will go to the tutorials and to the mini workshop. And here you will find all the instructions I will go to in the next minutes, hopefully, and I hope everything will run fine. But I was a little bit concerned about the space left on the VMs, but I think we have solved this by now. So you can log in. I think you all have already done this. And the next step in the mini workshop is the installation, but this is already has already been done for you. Thanks, Michaela, again. So, but just to show it here, I will click on the link, and there are very detailed instructions on how to on how to install the pipeline in case you want to do this on your own server or your own laptop. So if you have a small genome, I can recommend it to use it on a laptop. If you have a bigger genome, probably not use it on the laptop, use it on the server. All right, so as I said, there are very detailed explanation on how to install this. I will not go through this here, but I hope that it's very clear. If there are any hiccups, you can still send me a message or open an issue. I think most of the times we have got it, uh, got you covered that you can install it. All right, so let's go back to the mini workshop instructions. 
So the next step here is the input data. We have several different input data. And as you can already see here, they're not yet on your machines. You have to download them. So if you want to follow along, I would suggest you download this using those commands here. And I will quickly go back to the slides to talk more about the uh, to talk more about the input data. Maybe it's a good idea if not everybody is doing this at the same time. So you can also wait a little bit and come to this later. So not the uh, it will not end up crashing the internet connection here. So as I said, we were just here on the side of the mini workshop. So I'm not sure yet if we will somehow publish those slides, maybe on a Zen Zenodo repository or something or in the TE hub. But if so, this link is also clickable up here so you can get there really quickly. All right, as I said, input data. So there are four different types of input data for the pipeline. One is the circle sec or mobile home sec data that are paired and reads with from your sequencing. Those are required. It's no way, there's no way you are not using them. So I got this question yesterday a lot or two days ago a lot. So unfortunately, it's not possible to just use any sequencing, genomic sequencing data to find ECC DNAs. You have to go to the procedure of amplifying the DNA. All right. So the next thing you can input is control data. So this can actually be just any genomic sequencing data to compare with. So I will come back to this later. What you also can put in is a reference uh, genome assembly. It's probably a little bit confusing because it's two times references. So this is a reference genome assembly, which is hopefully pretty good. But as I said, even if you don't have one, you can still use the pipeline with the control data set. What's also be possible to input are reference sequences just for annotation. So basically any repeat library can be put in there. If you're not looking for repetitive DNAs in your ECC DNAs, it can be also anything else. All right, so let's get back to the workshop instructions. So if you're going to, uh, the, to the VM, you have to, or you should go. It's not necessary, but you have to, to figure, figure around with the data to have it in the right place. So we will just go into the right directory in, with the beginning. So yeah, as I just said, I was a little bit concerned about the uh, left space, but I think everybody's VM should now look like a little bit like this. So it's, there should be enough space. So first of all, we want to go into the uh, into the folder where the example data is already partly placed, but not everything. So we want to go to the Moneyconda um, folder. So from this, you might already see we are using Miniconda to or Conda to install the pipeline, and yeah, to have a virtual environment. So we are going to an environment which is if you install it as is suggested, will be called ECC Explorer. And in there, there will be a bin folder. And in this bin folder, there should be the downloaded version, the, the downloaded repository. And in this repository, we should have a folder called test data. And there you have different data sets. So you have a readme already and it might look a little bit different for you now because I already downloaded the data, so I don't uh, shrink in the internet connection as well. So we have uh, two, uh, four files in here, which are two of them are called ADNA and two are called GDNA, and they are FASTQ files. So uh, your input files should be either FASTQ or FASTQ in a zip way, but they also can be faster files. So pretty much anything is, is possible here. So as I said, you have to download the data to this place to have everything together. So I'm using eFetch here, but you can well, basically do it with in any way you want. And you just need this uh, test data here for the demonstration. But in, if you use it yourself, it can be basically any, 
it, it will be your own data that is in this place. So we have, as I said, we have a, re, a reference genome assembly and going down a little bit, there will also be a, a reference sequence database. In the, our case here, it's just one sequence, but if you have more to input for your own data later on, it of course can be more. So if you have all downloaded it, if my, maybe someone, if someone's running late, you can still look into the, uh, to the cheat sheet more or less, but I hope so far everybody who's following along has downloaded these files and we can move on to the next step. So we will now make it a little bit easier to access this data and move it to a, a folder in the home directory. Right, so let's go here and go back to the home folder. No, this was not the right one. <laughs> so like this. So we are back home. We can see we have the things we have before there. I think you might have still the uh, PFARM database there, but as I said, I was a little concerned <laughs> about space. I deleted it to not run into any trouble. So we are making a directory called ECC uh, workshop, but this is just for here, so you can name it anything you want. I will just go there in there because I already moved it there, but with this command here, you can move the, the, the data in the directory just to your, on your machine to your home directory. But I think by now you're all pretty familiar with the terminal and this should be no problem. So let's go into this directory and let's see what's in there. So by now there should just be a test data folder and that's true, so this is good. And now I think the next thing we can do is to look really into the command line options of our tool. So to do this, if I now try to just run this, as it says in the, in the instructions, I will get a command not found because as I said before, we are using a conda environment, so we first have to activate our conda environment. Therefore, we do activate, we do not activate, we do conda activate, of course. And then our, our uh, environment, which is called ECC Explorer, just like the folder in where we were in before. So with this, you see that the the parameter here in the terminal has changed from base to ECC, so ECC Explorer. So we now know that we are in the right environment. So this also is, we were before we were in the base environment, so maybe some of you have wondered why there's base and you don't always have it on your command line. All right, so let's do this again with the ECC Explorer and try to run it with the help command. And now we get some output. There's already quite a lot in this, and I hope you're not intimidated by the options, but we have seen, I think, some other tools with even more options today, so you should all be good. So there are some important things. They are up here, so these are the input data which are required or recommended. So if you want to have more information on all this, you can have a look at the manual. So the manual is also in the GitHub repository, and if you download the pipeline, you will automatically have it. And there you will have a description of all the parameters you have and how you can change them and what should be in them there. So, but if you have any trouble, as I said, you can always message me and ask. So as we are going on with the time, let's go back to the cheat sheet to actually run the pipeline now. So this is the overview on the settings I want to run it with now, but I think I don't have enough time to go into detail very much. Basically, you can read along and I hope they are really self-explanatory. So the first command here is to go into the folder we just created before. So, but I'm already in there, so I will just copy this command which includes everything that we need to run. So I just go down again and copy this command here and it says, yes, I want all this there. 
Okay, so that's what the command looks like. So maybe we can go a little bit over it. So output here is, I think, pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's the directory where everything will be placed afterwards. In this case, it will just be named test run as it's a test run. Then we have our data files, our uh, amplified DNA, which is called ADNR, uh, reads in the forward direction and in the reverse direction as we are using paired end data. And next, our uh, genomic data, so our control data. Then we have our reference genome, our reference database, uh, a trim option, so you can use the pipeline with just the raw data you get from your sequencing server or service or from your sequencer if you have one. And you can do the trimming option right within the pipeline. And then there's also a option for, for today, which is read count. So we will downsample our files to just a thousand reads to get it run within uh, appropriate time. And we can do some logging. So this is not really necessary, but if you want to log everything which is printed to the uh, to the command line now, you can do this with a log and it will be placed in a file. So now I will just run the pipeline and this takes some minutes. So while it's running, let's take a look on what we are actually doing here. So I hope I did not, yeah, I did interrupt it, right? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I guess I have to log back in. So I have to copy again my password. Oh, I did. Or did I? Did I close the whole thing? Ah, no, I did not. I I just changed to the other command line. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> All right. So no trouble here. Just trouble by me. Okay. I actually wanted to go back to the presentation. So let's have a look on what's going on right now. So we are now running the two main modules or depending on your input data, it's also three models running, uh, mo modules running. One is a mapping module and one is a clustering module. And these are the main things we are running here. And as I said before, we are hijacking software, which was not really meant to do for this, but works really well. For the mapping module, we use uh, a mapper called Segemir, which is not the fastest and doesn't, uh, is not very resource friendly, but it was made for detection or for mapping of split reads. And split reads, as you can see in the graphic here, are one characteristic of the ECC DNAs. So if you have a read uh, on the junction of the ECC DNA, if we assume that it's coming from a gen genomic region, if you have this uh, over it, it will be split in your linear mapping. So this is one way or one characteristic of ECC DNA if you're mapping it. Another one is the discordant reads. So we also check, also check for discordant read pairs. And of course, as we amplified the DNA in the beginning, we will also check for amplified regions. In the clustering module, we hijack the Repeat Explorer tool. We just heard about it. So to remember, um, so for here, we will want to find, uh, or mostly we maybe want to find uh, repetitive DNAs anyway, so it will it's likely that they will put, be put out. But if we take a step back and look how the DNA is actually amplified, we will see that we will end up of, uh, with tandem arrangement of uh, copies of the circle in the end. So this is why the Repeat Explorer works really well to detect those um, tandem arranged uh, copies of the circles. So I think, or I hope by now that the Run is already finished. Let's have a look. Ah, it's almost finished. It's still creating some graphs. So I think the next one is already the output files. So let's let's shortly wait for it to finish. But I guess it should be in a moment. So if there are already some questions, I can take them now maybe. No, also fine. Okay, then I probably will go a little bit more into detail here, and maybe spoiler you also already with the uh, with the output data. So there's uh, a lot of output in the pipeline because we are using two different approaches and also comparative approach. 
But again, just like the command line uh, options, you have the quick start manual, which I just showed before, which is in the repository. And there you also have a table where you can find all the output files and the short description. So there are different types of output. And here you can see the table which describe hopefully good enough so that you know what each file is about. So there are some important ones which are highlighted and I think those three we can check now. And as you can already see, the, those are HTML files. So as you have, so this uh, worked quite well. So if you're getting the, the message, thanks for using ECC Explorer, you're good, everything worked well and that's what we want. And if this is not the case, something went wrong. I hope this will never happen to you, but maybe it will. So if, if so, it will also hopefully show you why. <laughs> okay, so the next step is to get the data back from the server. I guess I will skip this to have some time left in the end. So it is explained here. If you want to do it today, you can zip your uh, test run uh, folder and transfer it using FTP, uh, SFTP to get your data from today and to have a look on your machine because I think the VMs will not be up for a long time anymore after the meeting. So if you want to have a look at this, get your data. So, and I already did this so we can have a look and we can see here the test run will have three folders. So here is also the input data again. So in some cases, it's, it's good to know which exact data got in your pipeline. So it's stored here. Most of the times you don't need it, so you can delete it. Read data and reference data is just as I said, is the input data which is used in the pipeline. But the interesting things are here. So you see the clustering results, uh, comparative results, mapping results, and all of those have a summary HTML file. So I will have not much, I have not much time left, so I will have a look into the comparative results. And here you can see an overview of what you will get. So on the left side here, you can see a Manhattan style plot where you have pretty much the mapping depth or the coverage depth of the, of the reads you have. And uh, in a window, in, a, in this case, in a 100 base pair window. And you see that there's one region coming up and there is really amplification has, a, has happened. So we can be quite sure that we have something amplified here from our ECC DNAs. If this region is marked in red, it's also, it shows that there are also discordant reads in this region and split reads. So otherwise, if there, can, there might be peaks, but they will not be colored. And on the right side, you can see uh, the cluster plot. So the overview of the clustering approach. So we have a lot of clusters and they are very abundant in our treated or amplified um, uh, read data set and not very abundant in our control data. So this shows us that this is amplified in our amplified data, which we would expect if it's amplified. So these are good candidates to be uh, ECC DNA. So if we look down here, we have uh, um, another overview, uh, overview on um, different candidates. So you can see here the name ECC candidate one. And on the plot, you can see the coverage, which is uh, refers to this area here. So it's just a detail, more detailed look. And what you can also see is the sequences of the clusters uh, put against the genomic region. So you can see that the whole region is basically covered by the clusters. And you also have some more information on here. And maybe what I also want to, still what I want to show is uh, the R file you have in here. So basically if you know R, you can modify every output plot here and make it to your needs and make it pretty to publish or just change the colors, whatever you want. So I guess with this, I'm mostly through and there's not much time left, but yeah, as I said, in the uh, manual, there's an explanation on every, on mostly every file. For the clustering, you can also have a look at the Repeat Explorer documentation, so you will find most of the things you need there.
All right, I think. Thank you for your attention, I guess. <laughs>